Hey Pyro, today we are burning this lovely little charcuterie board. This board has a beautiful wreath around the word gather, and this is our Crate Club project for the month. If you are new to this, it is a subscription box, and the last times to get in it are November and December. It is being phased out, so if you want in on it, crateclub.burnsavvy.com has all the details. If you have the Crate Club, you have all the supplies that you need to make this at home. And we do have an overstock sale that is going on right now. So if you wanna go check that out, that link will also be in the description. It's my Etsy shop. I'm Jannie Lizenby, your pyro professor. Let's burn. You will need a sanding block or sandpaper. This one's 220 grit. You will need a beechwood charcuterie board. You'll need a pattern and some tape to tape the pattern down, some scissors and a tracing tool or embossing tool, some carbon paper or tracing paper. You will need butcher block oil and a rag to apply it with. You will also need a rope to hang it with. I am going to take the sanding block and sand down the charcuterie board. Then we'll take our pattern and cut it out. I've already got this one cut down to size. I like to cut them into squares so that it's really easy to tape down one side, and then we can lift the pattern and check our progress. So we're going to tape down the top and make it really easy for us to lift it up and put it back down. Now we'll take our carbon paper shiny black side down, gray matte side up, and we're going to put it in between the wood and the pattern. This is gonna transfer the pattern to the wood. Then we'll take our tracing tool, or embossing tool, nail dotter, whatever you wanna call it, and we're going to trace over the pattern, every part of the pattern, until the entire thing is transferred over to the wood. And every now and again, you need to lift up that pattern and make sure that you've traced everything down. That way you don't miss anything because once you take the pattern off, it's really hard to add in the details that you missed. Sometimes it's not that hard, but usually it's, it's pretty hard. So you wanna make sure that you transfer everything and then you lift up the pattern to check your progress. Once you are satisfied with your pattern tracing, you make sure everything's on there, then it is time to take off the pattern and get burning. For the small details, like the little dots that we're going to be burning, some of the little lines, I would recommend a round ballpoint tip, like one of these, or I would use a flow point like one of these. Now this is a mini flow point and this one is the larger flow point. Those will be great. For the shading, I recommend an actual shading tip or this cylinder tip that's been sliced at a diagonal, or I would use this chisel tip. If you're using a wire nib burner like I am, I would recommend a large round flat shader or a small round flat shader. I'm going to be using the small one today. I'm going to start by outlining the letters and then filling them in. If you want more details on how to do this, you can join my YouTube membership where I've got some tutorials that really share more in-depth detail. I don't time-lapse my videos for the YouTube membership, but you get to see it in real time and up close with lots of extra detailed instructions. Now, when I want to get another angle, then I like to turn the wood instead of turning my wrist. It really helps to ease up the uh, extra stress that comes from turning your wrist. Because when you turn your wrist, you have to kind of fight the wires. You have to fight the weight of the pen. And it's just so much easier to turn the wood if you can. So that's what I did here. I turned the wood so that I could get a better angle or a different angle on this wood burning and be able to fill in these little spaces that I just wanted to clean up a little. Now I'm going to continue to use the shader and just use the sharp edge of it to make these little lines around the wreath. When I get to the leaves, I'm going to start adding some shading. So I'm going to create an edge and then I am going to fill in just a little bit on those edges using the pulling stroke. And I'm going to do this with all the leaves around the wreath.
If you wanted to switch nibs for these little dots, this would be a good time to do it. And then you could use the flow point or the mini flow point to just outline these gently and then fill them in with shading, just real simple shading, super small shading. So it's almost not even noticeable, but it's just enough to give it a little bit of depth. I I'm not going to switch out my nib. Sometimes I think it's really fun to just use the same nib for the entire project and practice using my technique with one nib and try to get different techniques, different styles using the one nib, which I think is really fun. So that's what I'm doing here. I am just using the very edge of this nib and making the tiny little circles and then giving them a tiny bit of shading. If this video has been helpful so far, it'd be amazing if you'd hit that little like button. It lets YouTube know that I'm doing an okay job. And if you are interested in tutorials like this, I definitely plan on posting more, so you might want to subscribe. The last thing I want to do is fill in any little spaces that need a little cleaning up. So sometimes you have little bumps on the wood or you have little spaces where the line is a little thinner than you want it to be. You can just thicken it up right now, add all of those extra little details that are going to finish up your piece. With the burning done, it's time to add the finishing touches. You'll want to get some butcher block oil and put about the amount of a kernel of corn onto your applicator rag. And then you want to rub that into the wood, okay? And then you're gonna let that sit for 15 minutes, buff off any excess, and then add a second or third coat. Then I like to let that sit overnight. That helps to really condition the wood. Then you want to add your jute, and you're simply going to thread it through the hole, and then you're going to tie a knot. What I do is I like to loop it around the back of my fingers and then bring the fingers out and put the rope in behind that loop and then pull it tight. Then you just cut off any excess and it's ready to hang. You can also sign up for the membership that has lots of other tutorials. Just check out this video right here. It's gonna tell you all the things you need to know about which level is gonna suit you best. And if you want more tutorials like this, you're gonna to wanna to watch that video right here. I'm Jannie Lizenby, your pyro professor. Later, pyro.